Cousteau, these are not only the last line of defense, they're also the first line of defense of our solar system. The Solar Watch, in particular, is the shield host that patrols the outskirts of our solar system and tries to get onto whatever threat comes in first. And so that's why they're often seen on bikes. Uh, that's why I got a nice Solar Watch bike here. I painted this Shadow Keeper really quick and dirty uh, recipe. And people there ask me how to paint a super grim, dark, grimy Solar Watch model. So I got this bike. Now, I paint my miniatures assembled, but even I am not crazy enough to paint a bike with the dude on top of it. So, of course, I didn't glue him down. Now, if you're assembling bikes, what you need to do is you assemble the bike, you assemble the guy, and then just before you glue the arm to the guy, you line up the arm with the hand, and then you glue the arm, and you hold it in place until the glue has set. Because this way, it's so much easier to paint the two. I got the lance magnetized, not because he can carry different weapons, but for transport. If you will carry him around with this lance sticking out like that, it's gonna break at some point, so easier to just magnetize it. I'm gonna be painting the bike on camera, the rest I'm gonna paint off camera because it's just, it's faster. So first of all, a little look at the bike. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna approach this? I'm gonna of course paint the eagle gold, why not? And there's gonna be some details over here that are all gold as well. And next to the gold, I want to have red because the solar watch is white, but they have red and gold accents. So I'll do the top here red, the seat red, maybe a little bit here and there red, but especially we're gonna work with grime. Before the grime though, the red, because the red needs to be grimed as well. I'm gonna leave the gold for the end, because the gold is gonna get weathered and worn differently. So, first up, Blood Angels Contrast Paint. So just a quick layer all over the parts that I want to have red, and Blood Angels Red is way too bright, I know, but it's pretty much the only red contrast paint I have, and I just don't really wanna get another one. And we'll grime it up and weather it down, and it will look better. And the only where, place where I'm going to be careful with this contrast paint is places where I know I want to have white. So over here, I know these parts of the engine, they're going to be metallic. So it doesn't matter if I hit it with contrast paint. I'm just going to paint over it anyway with a metallic paint. And this way you can really speed up your painting. If you know which parts you're going to paint with which paint, you know where you can work fast and where you have to be neat and work nicely. So. Any White Scars fans in the audience? Because I think you'll like this too. And maybe you could actually follow along, paint your own army like this as well. I'll quickly show you what I did in red. So of course the top here, the handles, his seat, and all these little bits and pieces that they have strapped over the metal rims or handles or whatever it is. And then of course on himself, the cloth, the plume, and I used these leg warmers and his gloves as well. And of course the shoulder pad. This is the I iconic shoulder pad of the Custodes and that's where they really show their shield host colors. Now, this time, I'm not going to forget to highlight my red like I did with my infected Tigurius. So I got some pink horror here and I'm just quickly gonna dry brush all over the red and give it a little bit of a highlight. And this is nice and pink, it will desaturate, it will make the red look a bit more worn. And I just wanna hit the edges, all the trim, all the ridges, and just give it a little bit of a highlight and at the same time make the red look like it's older, worn, and it's losing some color. Now I want the red to look a little bit chipped and the underlayer would be, of course, the white. Imagine they spray it all white and then they paint it red, just like I did. So here I got a little bit of kitchen sponge and I'm just gonna get a little bit of white on it and then stipple it on. And really the only reason I'm using these tweezers is because otherwise my fat fingers would get in the way of the camera and you wouldn't be able to see anything. But you don't really need them if you're at home. So I'm going to be very sparingly here with the stippling. I'm just gonna find some edges like over there, there, that's good enough. I don't need to do much more over there. I'm gonna leave some off because it's actually quite thick paint, but some over here makes sense, a bit over there makes sense. Not too much, you're still painting Custodes, right? We're not painting a Plague Burst Crawler like I did before. This is just to show that the bike is aging and it's not being sort of maintained properly anymore because who has the resources for that when there's only war? So stipple this, this is enough. I think uh, a little bit over there because this is a bit boring. So there, finished. That's all you need to do. And I'm only doing this on this plate because this is the metal part. I don't have to stipple the seat or the cloth or anything like that. Just the metal bit. 
Now there's a bunch of bits and bobs on this bike and also on the custode himself that I would like to paint metal. And for that I'm using Iron Warriors and I'm picking out things like the guns because you can't have the guns and sort of the base of the model or in this case the bike all the same color because if you do that it's going to be hard to identify them and you want to see the guns when you're playing 40k because they're important and it's a war game right so pick out metal parts like this there's a bunch of pipes over there these pipes that i talked about earlier there's a bunch of bits and pieces that i'm going to do with iron warriors first so a quick run over what i painted metallic over here uh, i did this exhaust that he uses for his seat warmer because this is a jet bike and if this is the jet engine what the hell does it have a regular engine with exhausts for must be a seat warmer so that jet engines metallic that's metallic little bits and pieces here metallic these pipes over here metallic and then i did some of the stuff here on his back the exhaust metallic as well exhaust on the front tiny details that help you sort of break up the monotony of the white and now it's time for some streaking grime. And what I'm going to try to do here is I have a little cup, 50-50 white spirits and streaking grime. And I have another cup here. I hope this is visible yeah, on camera. That's just pure streaking grime. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash the whole model and I'm going to try and get this effect so that it's just all grimy and dirty. And it gives me a layer of grime to work with and then I can grime it up even more. But most importantly, because I sprayed him white, if I don't do this, there might be little bits of white deeper in the model, like in the recesses over there around the engine that stay white because I can't get to them with normal paints. And so if you use a wash like this, it will go in there and it will make sure that it's not something super bright white jumping out at you as you look at the miniature. So I got a big brush because I don't have to be accurate with this at all. And 50-50 streaking grime, white spirits. I just go over it all super quick. I just make sure I get into all the recesses, exactly for the reason I just mentioned. And it's fine if I go over this eagle here. It's gonna be painted over with gold later on. You can just paint with acrylics over these enamels. It really makes no difference. And this way you can work fast and don't have to be careful. You don't have to be very accurate with it. Oh, and the reason that I have that extra cup of, steel of white spirits here is just in case this is too dark. Let's say I put a lot in one place and it's not running off enough. I just take a little bit of white spirits and I can sort of water it down. It's just there to make sure that if I don't have my mix right, I can quickly correct it without having to, I don't know, wipe off the streak and grime or anything. So everything is covered in the streak and grime mix, except of course the lands. This one is gonna glow, so I don't need to make it dirty first. And now while it's still wet, I'm gonna use a sponge and I'm going to dab off the streaking grime here and there because I don't want it streaking, I don't want it covering the whole model. I also don't want the highlights to be perfectly white and then the recesses be covered in grime. I want blotchiness on this model. So I take a dry kitchen sponge and I start just dabbing on here and there and try to get off the streaking grime and go all over the model like this and try to get a blotchy look. You want a look as if there's dirt here and it's perfectly pristine there, but it's not streaking down because that's not what happens with a bike or with a plane. A tank that stands in the, in the, in the weather outside has rain falling down and it streaks down. That's not what's happening with this bike. So, but I still want to make it look dirty and nasty and rough. So the sponge helps with that and just sort of stipple wherever you want to get rid of some of that streaking grime. Take a look, this little armor plate that he has over his exhaust. It's now blotchy and still dirty. There's grime in there, but it's not looking like it's streaking down because that just doesn't happen. So over the whole model with this, over the Custodes armor as well. Because even though they can stand for 10,000 years, this guy isn't. He's riding around on his nice seat warmed jet bike. Nice, he looks dirty, he looks grimy, but not like normal with streaking grime. It's just blotchy and there's dirt everywhere. But now we're gonna do some panel lining. And panel lining basically means that everywhere where two pieces of the model meet, you draw a little line. And normally you use panel liners for this. That are just AK Interactive special paints for that. They're extra liquid. But I'm gonna use rust streaks, which is also pretty liquid. And I'm just gonna go like this by every, every line that I can find on this model. And then some of them, like let's say here, there's too much. So I wash out my brush and I take a little bit of white spirits 
and I gently push it back into the panel. Let's get a piece of paper. I gotta clean the brush. There. White spirits again. And then push it down. You can work with these enamels very easily. You can make mistakes, you can put on too much, but here there's a little bit too much. Let's just push it back into that groove. And that way also you get a more jagged look on the on this panel liner. So it's not like there's a neat outline everywhere. It needs to be a little bit jagged because it's starting to rust. So I'm going to do this all over the Mini. It's going to take some time, but I'll show you the results. Time for some real rust. So I'm getting the Typhus Corrosion and... Now hang on, hang on, hang on. I said I was going to show you what it would look like after that panel liner. And then I forgot to actually film this and do a little run over the model. So just take a look here. You see how much the panel liner separates all the panels? That's what it's for. That's why it's called a panel liner. And it makes the whole miniature much more interesting. And it's especially important if you paint something white like this, because otherwise it's just one white, and in this case, little grimy mess. So let's continue. First of all, we're gonna work on these exhausts because I'm assuming that these get some pretty heavy heat damage when he turns up the heat of his seat. And so also this cover, the heat shield, I'm just gonna get that corroded. And basically anything that I first painted with metallic around here is gonna get this type of corrosion. And now we brighten the rust with a little bit of scrag brown and I'm just gonna dry brush this on to get a nice dusty look and make it look more rusty. Followed by a tiny bit of riser rust just to make the rust pop really, really well because there's plenty of red already on the Mini and with the streaking grime and the panel liner also rusty, there's a lot of reds in there and it's good to make the rust stand out a little bit more. And then I'm going for the gold and of course I'm using Retributor Armor, the absolute gold standard for painting gold in Warhammer. And I am doing this eagle and I'm going to do these little details there on the wingtips and so on. But I'm not sure how much more I'm going to do because I want to keep the gold kind of to a minimum on the bike and then more onto the actual custodius model. Uh, that way you get a nice little contrast, one being whiter than the other, one being more gold. But let's see. I usually do this, I just paint, I see where I go. If I want more gold, I paint more gold. And then a quick wash of dark brown for green vehicles by AK Interactive. This is a very dark brown wash and it will dry up almost blackish. And that's really good for this gold because it will set it apart from the rest of the miniature. The rest is already these brown, reds and tones and so on. I want to do something different with the gold. Now look at the gold. It's getting there. It's starting to look nice and worn and tarnished, but it's not really there yet in my opinion. We're going to add some streaking grime, but not like before slathering it all over. We try to stay in the recesses. I just want to make it look as if it has the same dust and dirt as the rest of the bike. So I'm just going here through all these recesses and then a dry brush with the worst gold in existence and that's Auric Armor Gold. This is the worst gold because it never covers and that's why it's perfect for this purpose. You just dry brush a little bit, you only hit the edges and don't have to be afraid that the deeper recesses of the gold also get hit by this. And this is also very very yellow gold so you get a very nice gold shine. Gems are important for custodies, they like their little shinies. So I got some soulstone blue over here and I'm just going to go over all these gems. And the reason I can just go over them right now is that I already painted them gold before because I knew this was going to happen. Yeah, I've painted custodes before, I have my own custodes army, they look uh, like this, bronze. And I have a video on how to make these grimdark bronze custodes as well if you're interested in some other paint schemes. But we gotta do these gems. And then we gotta go to move on to the bike again and we're gonna do something with the screen. Because there I didn't think ahead, so we're doing gold followed by blue as well. And this you need to do a couple of layers because it's a pretty big surface and you need to make sure that it's well covered. And it will kind of get a shiny glossy look so it will look kind of like a screen. And it, yeah, I don't know, I guess it lights up. Uh, next up we're gonna do the exhaust because we gotta make sure that the jet engine is actually glowing. So I got a pretty thick brush here and it's loaded up with white and I go as deep as I can and I just turn it around until I think that I have gone far enough. I see, let's point this at the camera. Yeah, so like that. I'll do the smaller hole next in the back, that, that hole. And I just go in and turn around like this and it will coat it all in a nice white layer in there. And then after that, you do essentially the same with contrast frost heart. You go in there, 
turn it around, but you pull up a little bit more. So that not only the deepest recesses get the blue, but also the parts above it. And now because the recesses were white and the part above it wasn't, the deeper parts will be brighter and the parts closer to the exit won't be so bright. So we do the same with the small hole. And then it's time to also grime up these jet exhausts because they're still way too clean. Oh, and in the meantime, I've done the same thing for the lands. And yes, the whole lands, because there are nubs over here that they use for these power weapons, just like there. So for me, the whole thing is boiling hot. Imagine getting that shoved up your backside. Now, how are we gonna dirty up the exhaust? With exhaust wash from AK Interactive. And I'm going to take some of this and I'm just gonna work on the outsides over here and just little bit by little bit make it look a little bit more dirty and grimy. And I'm trying to focus on really the end parts of the exhaust so that that looks like it's the dirtiest. But I'm also gonna use this for the sort of combustion engine exhaust and to sort of make it look like there's some charring and some soot, that's the word, on the edges of this exhaust because you know, a combustion engine leads to soot as well. Then we gotta finish the suit with a little dry brush of black right onto these pipes and also a little bit around it because if they're pointing down like this, then stuff around here is gonna get black too. And this is just gonna make it look even more dirty and more grim dark and more worn, like they never had time to put this through the wash street. We're almost there. I just gotta get the weapon a little bit better and there's a couple more details to paint. But for this weapon, I wanna make it just look a little bit sharper than it does right now. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of dry brush of white. And because I did the whole lens, I'm going to start over here and I'm gonna make this part lighter and then gonna make the tip darker blue. And that way, I hope I can get the impression that the tip is sort of more filled, more powerful, something like that. I just do the edges over there, but I make all of this bright white. And now all the hoses get a quick layer of black Templar and then he looks like this and i think he came out pretty well if i say so myself he looks grim dark dirty grimy but with good contrast nice deep gold that's also tarnished the engine clearly has something wrong with it is burning oil that's what all the coal and all the suit is for and the jet engine is brightly lighting up i really like this video i really enjoyed painting him i hope you enjoyed watching it and if you did give a little like and maybe check out this video as well